Have you ever been left scratching your head with Scratch's direction system? Well, in this tutorial, I'll explain how it works and how we can use it to point in the direction of a coordinate using a tan. Remember, that's just an inverse trig function. But I want to be real with you. This tutorial, it's a little bit on the tricky side. Heck, when I was first out researching this, it took a few tries for it to really land with me. But now here I am explaining it to you. So I know if I can do it, you can do it as well. Remember, ask questions, help each other out, and strengthen that grit muscle of yours. You've got this. All right, let's get started in just a sec. Hey, what's up crew? It's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer programmer, and I help curious people just like you along on their learning journeys through video tutorials. Welcome back to our Scratch Trigonometry series. If you're just jumping in, check out the starter project down in the description or the cards in the top right hand corner now as we've done a little bit work to get up to this point. You are going to need some understanding of Sokotoa, so if you're unfamiliar with that, I suggest you go check out a Khan Academy video first, or an early video that I've recorded applying it in Scratch. More cards coming your way and links in the description. Currently our rocket ship zooms around the stage, which is just dandy, but it's always oriented up north. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is manipulating its direction based on our keyboard presses. And we're going to use trigonometry to help us out with this. So let's jump across to Sketchbook to build a visual understanding first. Okay, we're over here in Sketchbook and we've got our little rocket ship here in the center. And we've got our X going across and we've got our Y going up and down. And we've also got our trig functions here, our SOKATOA. And we'll use this to help us out with rotating the direction of our ship. First thing I want to do is kind of translate these terms, hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent, and create a new triangle with labels that will be a little bit more familiar. So that brings me to this little triangle here. Whenever we go across, we're referring to the X value, and that's the X velocity, the amount that the rocket ship moves across the screen. When the rocket ship moves up, well, we're talking about the Y position. We're actually adjusting the Y position of the rocket ship. So we're gonna call that one Y velocity. Remember, in our Scratch project, we've actually got these variables already defined. In the last tutorial, I showed you how to create speed based on these two values using Pythagoras' theorem. Card coming your way in the top right hand corner to look at that if that's fuzzy. Okay, but we're here to get this ship rotating. So let's just say the ship was gonna travel to this point here. It's currently here and then it's gonna travel to here. I can simulate that by just rotating the ship basically pretty close to it. And you might be tempted to do something like this. Okay, our ship travels along the x-axis with our x velocity and it travels up with our y velocity. So we can draw a nice right angle triangle there. And this angle would refer to the direction. I can get our velocity triangle and just pop that over there just so you can see it with all the labels. But this isn't the triangle we're after. Let's jump over to scratch to see why. The answer lies over here in the direction system. So in Scratch's direction system, you can see that 90 degrees is east and zero degrees or north. To make matters worse, our ship is even pointing west when it's zero degrees. Man, that's confusing. So let's go fix that first. Open up the project if you haven't already. We're gonna jump into the costumes and we're gonna select the whole rocket ship here. And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it east. I'm just holding down the shift key so it's directly east. And you can see when it's pointing east on Scratch when it's zero degrees, it's pointing up. I'm just going to pop open the direction box again and I'm going to rotate the direction clockwise and you notice that the direction values start to increase positively so these are positive numbers and when we get to 90 degrees our ship is pointing east. When I rotate the ship all the way down to south we get to 180 degrees. When I reset the ship back to north and we turn anti-clockwise now look the direction values are now negative they're kind of reflecting what was happening on the other side and they go all the way down to negative 180 and then they kind of flip over like this. So the big takeaway here is zero degrees is pointing north or at 12 o'clock. And recall back in sketchbook, our rocket ship was sort of pointing around this direction. And you can see this is the triangle that we want to emulate. So let's jump back over to sketchbook to suss it out. Okay, so we're back over here in sketchbook and let's draw our starting point first. So remember, going up north or 12 p.m., that's zero degrees. We're wanting to go over to this spot right here. And then we can just complete our right angle triangle. We can signify our right angle triangle. And this is the angle that we're interested in. I've just placed our colors back here and shaded in the angle. Now let's get our labels back up. There's our angle, signified by this shaded area. And first we go up with the Y velocity, the change in the Y of the ship. And then we go across because that's our change in X value to arrive at our destination point. Now that our reference angle is here, our Y velocity is actually the adjacent angle and our X velocity is the opposite angle. And then we have two bits of information we can compute a third bit of information. This is where our circuital ratios will come to our rescue. We know the opposite, 
we know the adjacent and we want to find out what the angle is. So we can use TOA to help us out. Up here on the screen, I've got our trig functions available to us in Scratch. Here we've got tan and a tan. So which one do we want? Our standard trig functions of sine, cos and tan, they all take angles. And when we pass in an angle, we get a ratio. So a sine of 30 would return 0.5. Now over on this side, the right hand side, these are all the inverse trig functions. So arc sine, arc cos and arc tan. And they take a ratio. And they take a ratio of the division between the opposite, the hypotenuse or the adjacent sides. So the arc sine of 0.5 is gonna return the angle of 30 degrees. If that's all a little fuzzy to you, go check the card in the top right corner to do some revision. We're focusing on TOA and we want an angle. So that will be an inverse trig function. So we've got the opposite and the adjacent referring to tan, we want arc tan. So I've just gone and grabbed our arc tan function and I put in x velocity divided by y velocity. How do you know it's x velocity divided by y velocity? Well, it's opposite divided by adjacent. And our opposite side is our x velocity and our adjacent side is our y velocity. Why is it adjacent? Because the side is adjacent to the angle. And this is the side, our x velocity, that's opposite to the angle. It's time to head over to Scratch and code this up. Back here in Scratch, I'm gonna create a custom block first. I'm gonna call it set ship rotation. I'm gonna call set ship rotation after we set the speed inside the when the green flag is clicked set of instructions and inside the forever loop. Next up, jump into your variables and we're going to create a variable called ship rotation. Inside the custom block, we're going to set the ship rotation. And this is where we're gonna put the ATAN function. Jump into your operators and drag out the operator block with that drop down menu, find ATAN, Get the division operator block, jump over to your variables, grab x velocity, and you're gonna divide x velocity by y velocity. Then grab that whole block and put it inside that variable. Last thing we need to do for the moment is jump over to the motion category. I'm gonna grab the point in direction block. Head back over to the variables and you're going to grab the ship rotation and that is the direction we're going to point the ship in. Okay, technically you don't need this variable, but I like to have it just for cleanliness so you see what's going on. Now let's click the green flag and test out our handiwork. So I'm gonna go up here and cool, there goes our rocket ship. Now I'm gonna go down, uh oh, hang on a minute. Something's a bit funky going on there. Uh, what about when we go up again? Oh yeah, that, that's looking good. Okay, so it looks like there's a bug in our code. I knew about this and we're gonna explore it now. So to test our bug, I'm just gonna press left on the arrow key and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna press right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go up and that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna press down Okay, something's a bit wonky when we go down. Now I'm gonna press left and down, and that's pretty wonky. I'm gonna go back up, and now I'm gonna press right and down, and that's also wonky. So there's something happening when we are going down and in the left quadrant and the right quadrant. So let's jump over to Sketchbook to explore what's happening. Okay, the issue happens when our spaceship is pointing down in this quadrant and in this quadrant down here. Remember that our spaceship's rotation starts here at 12 p.m. or direct north. I'm just gonna draw a line out to the direction that we want our spaceship sort of turning. And the angle that we're interested in is actually this one here. I've taken a screenshot from scratch that shows the direction that we're after, and here it's saying it's 135. There's a way that we can test this. I've just got our ATAN function up here that we've been using, x velocity divided by y velocity. And we can test out this point. So we've got x is equal to two and y is equal to negative two. Might be a little bit hard to see there, but y is equal to negative two. We can take those values and test it out in Scratch and see if we get the same angle. Over here in Scratch, I've just hard coded those values into our function. So x velocity being two, y velocity being negative two. I'll click this and we get negative 45. That isn't 135. Can you think of where that comes from? Let's go explore it. We know that when our ship is fully rotated south, that angle is 180 degrees. So what's the difference between 180 degrees and 135 degrees? Yep, it's 45 degrees. So it seems like what Scratch is giving us is this right angle triangle right here. But this is 45 degrees, not negative 45 degrees. The answer lies in this clock that I've got up on the screen. Remember, 12 o'clock refers to zero degrees, three o'clock, 90, six o'clock, 180 or negative 180, and nine o'clock, negative 90. Now that works true for the Y values that are greater than zero. But when the values are less than zero, our clock actually rotates all the way around. So our new zero degrees is actually down here and this is where our 12 o'clock is. I know, it's pretty funky, right? So if we trace along anti-clockwise and we see the values from zero degrees, we're going to negative 90, which is why this angle here is negative 45 degrees and not 45 degrees. When our ship is oriented in this quadrant and we look at our values, they're actually increasing from zero to 90. So they're positive angles. 
So it's good to know. So when our ship is angled toward this quadrant, we're getting angles between zero and 90 degrees. And when it's angled in this quadrant, we're getting angles between zero and negative 90 degrees. I've just cleared the screen and got us back to where we started. Well, we know we only wanna do some action when Y is less than zero. And we know if we rotate fully around all the way, it'll be 180 degrees. So we can say that when Y is less than zero, we can add 180 degrees to whatever value we get. So instead of our starting value being zero, we're making the new starting value 180 essentially, and then we're just taking away the angle. So it would be 180 take away 45. And that's gonna leave us at our 135 degree value. For the angles over here, we're just going to add whatever angle is here to 180 degrees. And thankfully, Scratch just converts this angle to its negative counterpart for us. How nice, thanks Scratch. We could use some logic to make this a negative number, but I'll leave that for you to discover. Now it's time to head over to Scratch and code this up. So back in Scratch, we need an if block. I'm gonna put that point in direction outside the if block. We need the less than operator, and we're looking for when y velocity, so the change in the y amount, is less than zero. So that means it's a negative number. And when that happens, we need to change the ship rotation by 180. So we're adding 180 to the ship rotation. Let's hit the green flag and test it out. So we're going up, across, back left, and now we're headed down and everything is as it should be. Yeehaw. I was in the Scratch forums researching and I found a really slick way to do this in one line thanks to 0716. So this is an extension for those who are looking for a challenge. So when y is less than zero, this is gonna to evaluate to true and true is a number one. When y is greater than zero or zero, then this is going to evaluate to false and it will return in a zero. So we can use the one and the zero to our advantage. We can multiply 180 by that true or false value. So right now, this is going to evaluate to false. But as I move the ship down and I click this, it results in 180. I move up and it goes to zero. It's basically this if block in a reporter block. Then what we can do is we can add our ATAN value to our 180 degree switch and slot that in. And the really cool thing is we don't need that if block. But hey, just do what works for you. And there's all that code so you can see it. And there you have it. Our ship is just zooming around the screen looking pretty nice and it feels pretty nice as well. I hope yours does too. But if I look at our game, it's a little bit easy for our rocket. Nothing really happens. I mean, it's not really a game. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a turret to fire in our ship and we'll get some practice with the ATAN function again. In later tutorials, we're going to be shooting missiles and we're going to be using different trig functions. So make sure you stick it out. You're doing an incredible job. This isn't easy, but you're persevering with it. And you're doing incredible. So keep at it. I'm here to support you along the way. I hope this video helped wriggle you along with your understanding of finding angles using trigonometry. And that's basically the shortcut. If you're out there building a game, be it in Scratch or some other programming language, and you want to find an angle, 90-95% of the time, you're going to be using ATAN. If you're still a little bit fuzzy, it's cool because we're going to have another crack at it in the next tutorial. And if you reckon you got it down, that's cool because repetition is the mother of skill attainment. It'd be great to have another pass at it anyway. If you found it helpful, be sure to smash that like button. And educators, I'll have a resource for you down in the description below that you can go and suss out. But until next time, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.